All right guys, I'm, I'm doing something a little bit new here. Uh, we're going to be trying this out. I'm trying this with my new filming setup. This is my Canon 60D. I got this little Gorilla Pod, or it's not a Gorilla Pod. It's like a faux ripoff Gorilla Pod I got at Walmart. It's not really strong enough to hold the camera when it's standing, but when I put all three legs together, I can hold it like this. We're going to try this out. I'm going to start answering your questions. I'm going to start using this other camera to do this type of stuff because it's a little easier to carry around. It's portable, and the picture quality on it's a lot better than a GoPro. So we're going to try vlogging with this thing now. And I, for our first question that I'm going to answer on this series, Catherine Osman writes in and asks, Found your YouTube channel tonight. I subscribed. You mentioned you have a microwave in the Rotten Steak video. Where did you fit it in? I have an 05 W9 and I'm at a loss to where to put the microwave. Well, Karen, on top of that, I'm going to show you how to install a 32-inch television in your truck. So here we go. As you can see, i got this awesome 32-inch TV in here. Now how this is mounted up here, is uh, there's a mirror that normally goes on the cabinet right here. Well, it turns out that this TV mount bracket that I found is the perfect size to where all I had to do is pile it out those holes a little bit right there, and it bolted right up. So if I ever sell the truck and I want to take this back out of it, I just take those bolts out and I can put the mirror back in. I'll have to put a washer on the back side for the screw to go in because you had to drill out the back side where it was not a through hole before. But, uh, that's a really nice mounting option there, and I really like how this works. It puts my TV up here, and I can fold it all the way back like this uh, to where it's just up against the uh, edge here. Or I can uh, you know, turn it around this way if I'm doing whatever in here. It, it can get a little bit in the way it's sometimes, but I, I don't really notice it. Now, obviously, you can't do this with uh, the, the upper bunk in here because you wouldn't be able to fold the upper bunk down because this just doesn't swing over far enough to do that. So... In order to swing that out of the way, you, you, you wouldn't be able to have enough room for your upper bunk. So keep that in mind if you're going to do this. Um, I took my upper bunk out of here just because it, it took up so much space, I never used it. And if I put it down, it just turned into a collecting pot for a bunch of crap. So I'd, I'd rather just have a little bit of extra space that it gives me in here. It makes a sleeper fill a little bit larger, so I like that a lot better. Here's where I've got the microwave mounted. It's up on top of this cabinet over here. And you can see up on top of that, I've got my DVD player on top of it mounted to the top. I just stuck it up there with some sticky back tape. And in order to do that, if we look at the other side here, you've got this pad that's on the top here. You have to remove that pad, and it takes just a Torx bit to do that. So I took that pad off of there. That's sitting at home in my storage shed. I put all the screws back in. You want to put all the screws back in here because it holds the top of this down. And then I have a piece of mud flap that I cut off just sitting in here that keeps the microwave from sliding around. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see up in here, it's kind of dim, but I've got a screw eye back there, and that, that eye bolt bolts down, and it's got a ratchet strap hooked into it, and that ratchet strap goes up and over the top of the microwave, and you can see the ratchet up there on top, and then it comes down the other side. And on the other side, I just drilled through the side of the cabinet there, and I hooked it in there, and I just put another screw eye on that side. And that thing keeps this thing pretty secure. I really like this setup, and then to run the wires, as you notice, I don't have any wires running down the side here. I like it. Like, I'll show you this. When I move the uh, computer out of the way here, when I close the cabinet, uh, you got the cord for my laptop coming out there, but I don't, I don't like having any wires strung around on the outside here. And so the, the way I did that, you can see there's this uh, coupling right here. That's just a uh, threaded adapter for a piece of conduit, and the cord out of the microwave comes out of that. I did put some convoluted tubing over the top of it to help protect it, and I really need to wrap up these cords off of the microwave a little bit better. You see my microwave got a little smashed when it was in the other truck there and it fell, but it still works just fine. But I put that threaded adapter coupling in there, and what that does is it just keeps all my cords nice and neat and everything. And I moved it out here a little ways because I wanted the microwave to stick out as far as it does on the front. And the reason for that is, is uh, if it gets too far back there, it starts to rub in that corner and it makes a horrible, horrible rubbing noise. So that's why I've got that there. That just kind of works as a stop for the uh, microwave to keep it from sliding back. It protects the cords because you don't want your cords rubbing on that hard metal edge there. And uh, you just take a hole saw, hole saw that out. I believe that is an inch and a half threaded adapter coupler. Might be a two inch, I can't remember offhand which it is. It really makes for a nice setup. And then what I do here, in, I, you know, obviously I, I store all my GoPros on the face of the microwave. Good place to keep them. And then uh, I have this uh, little bucket that I found at Walmart. This little storage container here works great for storing all the silverware and everything. 
I've got my can opener in there. I've got bowls in there. Just a nice, neat way to keep everything stored and turn that into a little extra storage space for me. So anyways, I hope this gives you an idea of what it takes to put a microwave in here. This is just my little trick on it. Maybe somebody else has something a little better, I don't know. I've been doing this this way since like 2004, 2005. I've done it on both the trucks that I owned in the past there. Did it in the red truck. Uh, setup's always worked really well. Um, the, the top of it got dented up actually taking it out of the red truck, getting ready to put it into this one. I, I slipped up and I dropped it. It was kind of bad deal there when that happened. Uh, you don't want to put the ratchet strap down too tight because I think that would also dent it, but you need to have it on there good and snug. Um, that Having that piece of mud flap underneath, don't forget the piece of mud flap underneath. You need to use the, the good rubber, the, the sticky style mud flap. It has to be that thick type of mud flap material or you know some type of rubber anti-skid because what's going to happen is as you're going down the road, if you don't have that in there, this thing will start to work its way around. So that's something you really want to consider. Uh, something I need to do that I haven't done on this one yet is I, I usually go in there with a couple of self-tapping screws and I'll figure out where the holes for the feet are. I'll take the plastic feet off the microwave and I'll just put a screw down into the surface and then you can set the, the hole on the bottom of the foot there where that plastic foot used to go in and that'll sit over the top of that screw and that'll also keep it from sliding. That's another really good thing to do. Anyways, hope this helps. Uh, let us know how it works out for you.